Let us project our present knowledge with a little imagination and speculate on how satellites might be used in future operations from a worldwide weather center. This is the master control room. Electronic maps and view screens display up to the minute pictures of the weather around the earth. Every hour reports are automatically received from all points at sea, on land, and in the air. 22,000 miles out in space, three robot satellites train their sensitive television eyes on all parts of the Earth. These pictures are monitored on viewing screens in the weather center. Here in the computing room, electronic machines digest the constant flood of information received from all stations. This is then translated into an ever-changing diagram of the Earth's weather. Forecasts for every sector of the globe are made months in advance. Prediction charts have indicated that a powerful hurricane will begin forming today in the Atlantic Ocean. The electronic weather map shows an intense storm system building up about a thousand miles due east of Miami, Florida. The controller calls for a close-up satellite view of the troubled area. Coordinates. Coco 526, Yankee 2.5. Okay, controller. Coco 526, Yankee 2.5. characteristic swirling clouds of the hurricane are beginning to form. At sea, the waves anticipate the violence to come. The controller calls for a last-minute prediction of the hurricane's path. If control measures are not begun at once, the hurricane will smash across densely populated areas within 48 hours. A hurricane is forming 960 miles east of Miami, Florida. If control measures are ineffective, it will pass inland at Cape Hatteras in 48 hours. Control operations will begin within two hours, but safety precautions should be completed from Cape Fear, north no later than 6 p.m. tomorrow. At Weather Central, the control strategy is mapped out. A ridge of high pressure slants across the eastern United States between two low-pressure storm systems. If these two storm centers are intensified, the high will build up along the coast, forming a barrier that will turn the hurricane out to sea. Stand by. Now pulling in satellite number one for visual check of low-pressure systems L-20 and L-21. The operator brings the satellite into focus on the two storms. One centered over Kansas, the other over Labrador. Changing the northeastern low, L-21. With the touch of a button, the battle begins. On the ground, chemical cloud seeders begin to work the two storm areas. Robot planes seed the clouds from above. The storm centers over Kansas and over Labrador intensify as seeding continues. Now changing over to Hurricane Center H8. The fury of the hurricane mounts as 100 mile an hour winds lash the sea to a foaming frenzy. All stations, Sector C. Activate Phase 2 Control Plan Delta. Set vapor rockets for 42,000 feet. Execute As an emergency measure, the controller calls for a salvo of vapor rockets to be fired ahead of the path the hurricane is predicted to take. These artificial clouds will block the sun from evaporating more water to feed the hurricane. The reports coming into the control center indicate that the diversionary cloud seeding over Kansas is now creating a flood danger. Specially equipped robot aircraft are dispatched immediately. 
to release a high concentration of cloud seeding material into the fringes of the storm. Heavier seeding from the ground also helps to subdue the rain by spreading it over a wider area. The controller calls for another view of the hurricane, which has now moved closer to the coast. Signal out on number one satellite. Ten minute interruption for correction. Have you anything else in the area? Satellite station S1 is approaching area. We'll make contact. S1, S1, this is Weather Central. Request video signal at grid coordinates, COCO. An emergency situation has developed. In an orbiting space station a thousand miles above the hurricane, a crewman sends a temporary picture back to Weather Central. Okay, S1, your video is R5S5. Thank you. The hurricane has stopped moving toward the coast, but is still intensifying. It must be made to move northward and out to sea. This is a crisis. Aberdeen Station, activate multiple seeding rockets on course 117. Range. The controller decides to fire cloud seeding rockets just ahead of the hurricane, hoping to start it moving. Slowly the hurricane begins to shift. All available forces have been brought into play. Now we can only watch and wait. Let's go to Dylan Dreyer. She's northwest of Pittsburgh. It's already snowing there. Dylan, good morning to you. Good morning, Savannah. It's hard to believe that what I'm standing in is even associated with the blockbuster storm we're going to see develop later on today. It started as an Alberta clipper over the weekend, and now here's what we're seeing in Pittsburgh, just a little bit of light snow. Now, I bought this yardstick just to show you how this storm is going to transform over the next 24 hours. Here in Pittsburgh, we picked up about two inches of snow, but as we go into tomorrow night, we are going to be measuring the snow up to here, and in some areas, even up to here in cities like New York, Hartford, Providence, and Boston. So how does that happen? Well, this storm is expected to bomb out offshore, and that's a short word for the meteorological phenomenon called bombogenesis. It's when an area of low pressure undergoes rapid intensification by experiencing a barometric pressure drops of 24 millibars in 24 hours. That's the official definition. So what does that do? It causes the intensity of the storm to produce extremely high winds. In our case, we could easily see hurricane force winds. We're also looking at some coastal flooding because of those winds. Now, the other thing is, how am I going to get this yardstick up to Boston. I'm hoping I can even get to Boston because there are so many flights that have been already canceled out in advance of this storm. So we'll see what happens later on today. Matt and Savannah. All right, Dylan, travel safe. Now here is the Blue Mobile from the outside. We are a roving satellite truck and we are signaling up to the to the uh, satellite above and that is why we are kind of trying to stay away from downtown Boston because once you get into the buildings we lose our signal. I worked in Boston for six years and this is about as powerful of a storm as I've seen. I'm not going to lie, it's not bad being in the comfort of the warm Blue Mobile right now, which is a fully equipped vehicle with tons of cameras to show you all different views around us so you don't have to be outside in this storm. So it is brutal out here. Take a look at this view out the front of the Blue Mobile here. You can see that we have heavy, blowing, drifting snow that has been going all night long, creating whiteout conditions at times. Across Massachusetts, we have seen okay. wind gusts up near 79 miles per hour on Nantucket. We have have a foot and a half of snow already in parts of southeastern Massachusetts. We've also had serious coastal flooding prompting some evacuations with high tide earlier this morning. And the worst part about it is that these blizzard-like conditions are expected to last all day long. The blizzard of 2015 begins. 
With more than 35 million people in its path, from Maryland to Maine, the monster storm is bringing life to a relative standstill. The snow is being measured in feet, not inches. Not as bad as predicted in New York. The storm saving its hardest punch for New England. With blizzard warnings up across a 250-mile swath of the Northeast, authorities exercised caution. Commuter railroads were shut down, along with New York City's subways and buses. New Jersey's governor urged people to stay off the roads. Let's get hunkered down, go through the storm. You know, we're tough in this state. We've been through plenty of things before. While New York's travel ban for drivers could mean a $300 fine for violators. And at the airports, nearly 7,000 flights were canceled. The only thing flying, food off the shelves as shoppers mobbed the supermarkets to stock up on supplies. People just like fighting for things. It was just like crazy. New York City's mayor asked residents to check on neighbors in need. You don't know if you might be the one to save someone's life because you took the time to check in on them. A dangerous job south of Boston as crews cut power lines to prevent fires in the event of coastal flooding. As the blizzard bore down, people shared their experiences during the storm, from the frustrating to the fun, using social media. As the hours pass and the snow keeps falling, advice from a man who's seen his share of storms. Stay in the house. Get out of the snow. Let the snow people do their thing.